And, and God loves the young people. See, he reaches out to people. He reached out to me all my life. All my life, even though I was raised Catholic, lived 10 blocks outside of New York City, never held a Bible, nobody ever told me I had to get saved. Still, I know God's hand was on me. And, and I would talk to the Lord. I would talk to the Lord because I'd watched my little brother of nine years old die of leukemia. And, and I couldn't believe that that little boy that I had played with, well, actually, he was four years old and I was nine. And, and I couldn't believe that that little boy was just gone. And, and I'd never see him again. And so in a house that was riddled and full of witchcraft, because I, I've, I've testified about this before, my, my granny was up in the attic with us and she, was a, she was, would go to the fortune teller and have seances. And, and that's where I slept, up in the attic too. My sister, and my sister was tormented with demons and uh, mental illness, was put in uh, big mental hospitals and given shock treatments way back. And so my whole house was in a chaotic mode. But I talked to Jesus all the time. And I could feel him when I'd go down, I'd go down to the ocean. I always loved the water. And when I'd look out the water, I could feel the Lord pulling me. Something pulling me out there. I didn't know what it was. But when I wandered into that Bible study, praise God, the Lord changed my life. And, and when I began to read the Bible, his word was so alive to me. Matter of fact, when I was running from God, I would just open up the Bible because that little Jewish girl that first witnessed to me, she had given me a Bible and I, I, was, I always had the fear of God on me now. The fear of God even when I was running from the Lord. You know, God is really married to the backslide. Praise God. He truly is. Even if you've only had a touch, which I had a big touch, but it was still just a touch. And I was running from it. And I said, I, don't, I, I can't live like this. I don't know what's happened to me. But immediately God began to put gifts in my life and my eyes were opened. And I, like I, when I went into the dojo, because I, I actually did all that, and my husband was a black belt, but that's not when I met him. But when I was in college, I, I went and in, got into karate. But I'd be in the dojo and, and all of a sudden I'd see, you know, People's eyebrows start going up and horns pop up. I said, I'd shake my head. I'd say, God, I'm going crazy. Maybe I've just lost my mind. There was some reason ever since I went to that thing. And it got so bad, I couldn't even go outside on a beautiful day like today. I was so convicted. I couldn't look up at the sky. If I looked up at the sky, I knew that Jesus was coming back in the clouds of glory. Praise God. Praise God. I, I, and, I, and I couldn't. And, and so I just started going out at night and creeping around at night and uh, talking to people that were bound up like I was. But praise God, God set me free. And when I came to Jesus and just laid my life, laid it all down on the altar because I knew that the devil was going to kill me if I didn't, then, then when I began to read the word then, it just began to come alive inside of me. And ever since then, I have just loved the Bible. And you know, I, I keep this little Bible. It doesn't have any study helps. It doesn't have any Latin or Greek or any kind of thing in it. And I love the revealed Word of God. Yeah. I, I just go right to the Lord and I ask Him to show me things, you know. Yeah. And, he, and He always does. And I don't get on the YouTube. I don't get on the Internet. I just pray and ask the Lord and I read my little Bible. And I like to keep my little Bible with me because it's simple. And I can just pull it out and it's just the Word of God. But it just broke my heart. I, oh, I just, not, not in a bad way, but to hear my sister talk about. Oh, to hear her talk about how the Word was jumping out of that page because God's bringing a restitution where even old people like me and like my husband, 68 and 73, even people like me, God's had me on the potter's wheel since I was 19 years old. God's hand has been on me. And I have run, 
I have tried to hide. The, the, the Lord has raked me over hell, let me go through trials and tribulations, but he's always been there. I've been scourged like Job because the Lord wanted me to have a humble spirit. And I know why. It's so I could speak his word. Yeah. Praise God. Because so many preachers in these last days, they're, they're lifted up. And we can't be lifted up in our own self. Only thing we can lift up is the word of God. Lord. Praise God. But then the brother got up there and he was talking about the gift of, of tongues. And I thought for a minute he was going to take the scripture that the Lord laid upon my heart. Praise God. But that was one mind and one spirit. But here in Isaiah, he says, Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? You know, Paul said, Unless I come unto you prophesying or teaching doctrine or with a revelation. He said, Don't even pay any attention to me if I just come speaking my own word. But if I come because the Lord has laid something upon my heart, then, then listen. Praise God. But whom shall he teach? Knowledge. We need the knowledge of the Lord, not the knowledge that puffeth up, but the knowledge that edifieth and causes us to know Jesus in the fellowship of his suffering. And I'm just so thrilled that as an old woman, that I can still stand up and preach the gospel. Amen. Praise God that in about five or six weeks from now, we're going to go to the Philippines for a month. And we're going to be preaching and ministering. And I just thank God. I said, whatever you, you can do for me, Lord, I'll just be like the little woman. That If you just give me the crumbs on, under the table. Yeah. If you just let me feast at your table, and at your anointing. But I, I have to have the word. I have to have the word and the anointing and the balm of Gilead. I need so much balm in my own life. We need healing. Amen. Healing is the children's bread. And we have got to have healing in our bodies. I need healing. Amen. Praise God. You know, I'll go up and I'll pray for people sometimes. And, you know, I might be fighting something in my own body. But it doesn't matter because I know it's not me. I know it's only the prayer of faith that can save this, that can heal the sick. So I'll pray in faith knowing because Jesus lives inside of me that if I'm touched with the, my compassion, with the feeling of the infirmity of my brother and sister, even if I'm fighting something in my body, that Jesus can heal them. But then I go to the Lord and ask him for my own self. Praise God. Because we don't have to settle. Jesus didn't go to the cross in vain. Praise God, but he was wounded for our transgressions yeah. and bruised for our iniquities. Yeah. The chastisement of our peace, yeah. our nerves, all these things, that crown that he took upon his head yeah. was for the nerves and the anger and the frustration that tries to come against us. Yeah. That's why they drove those thorns down into his head. This same Jesus suffered and bled for us. Amen. And he took that whipping upon his back that we might be healed. God. Praise God. Oh, but whom shall he teach knowledge and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breasts. For precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept, line upon line. Here a little and there a little in our life we learn. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to his people. Amen. Now, you know me, when I was back in New York, they told me when they prayed for me for deliverance that I had to, I had to have the Holy Ghost. And I read in the Bible, I was all by myself. That was before the Lord got me out of that horrible place. Praise God. But I just got down on my knees in my room. And by faith, I said, Jesus, you wrote in your word that with stammering lips and other tongues, you said that you came upon your people with clothing tongues as a fire. 
And I just got down on my knees and I asked God to fill me with the Holy Ghost. And right there in that room where my grandmother used to live that went to the, was filled with all the witchcraft. Right in that room I got on my knees and God began to fill me with the Holy Ghost. And I've been I've been speaking in tongues ever since. And sometimes I get in my prayer closet and I just sometimes I'm speaking in tongues and, and God is showing me I know exactly what I'm praying for. I know I mean, the Spirit's giving me utterance, but God's giving me the understanding. Sometimes I'll get in a group church meeting and you pray for a while and it's kind of like a corporate prayer, but you just don't want to let it all hang out. You want to go into your prayer closet. So I just go in right there into my spiritual prayer closet. And I have just began to speak in my prayer language. Amen. Praise God. And I, I just thank Jesus for those stammering lips and other tongues. Yeah. And I believe before this service is over tonight, praise God that I want y'all to come up here. And I want to pray for you for the infilling of the Holy Ghost with evidence of speaking in tongues because we need the fire of God. We need the Holy Ghost and fire to breathe upon us Amen. to whom he said this is the rest. He says right there for stammering lips and other tongues will I speak to my people to whom he said this is the rest wherewith he may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing you know, many won't hear it. But for those of us that have eyes to see and ears to hear what the Spirit says to the church, we are hungry for God. Yeah. We've got to come to Him like a little bird Glory. with its mouth open, yeah. hungering and thirsting for the deep things of God, for truly deep calls unto deep at the noise of His water spouts. And He wants to fill you. He wants you to go on to higher heights and deeper depths. Oh, Jesus Woo. is here. Don't you feel Him? Don't you know Woo. He's here? He's Glory. here tonight. Praise God. This is the refreshing. Glory. And the word of God came unto them. Precept upon precept. The word of God, it comes. Oh, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little, that they may go. And sometimes they might fall backwards, brothers and sisters. We all have, but when we sin, and if we do, which the devil is the author of, of sin, God doesn't want us to sin. Amen. But if we fall short, we have an advocate with the Father, for condemnation is of the devil. And God doesn't want us to live in condemnation but he doesn't want us to live in it making excuses for our sins because Jesus wants to come in you in the Holy Ghost and he's the overcomer he's the overcomer of our sins Christ in us the hope of glory what is Christ it is that anointing and that anointing is truth it is that first anointing that comes upon you when you first get saved go back to that go back to the altar hold on to the horns of the altar and ask the Lord to fill you with that anointing that is the Christ that's why they said Jesus Christ it meant Jesus the anointed one we need the anointing because the anointing is truth, my brothers and sisters. Praise the Lord. It will not fail us. Praise the Lord. Praise God. That holy anointing Praise will never Lord. fail us. And I, I was reading here today in the Psalms, and then I'm going to let someone else get it. But it says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament, the firmament showeth his handiwork. For day unto day, utter its speeches. The Lord's speaking to us every day. Amen. He says first the natural and then the spiritual. He speaks to us through the things all around us in the world. Oh, you know, I love the animals. I love my dogs. I love my horses. I love my cat. 
I love the birds. I love the sister talking about the white birds. You know, God will speak to me through the birds. Sometimes I just, you know, I believe, beware lest ye entertain angels unaware. I, I'm always looking to see an angel because I have. And, and if God wants me to see an angel, then he will. But I want to receive he whom God sends in the name of Jesus, we can receive because some of us are God's messengers that he sent into the harvest field to reap. God wants us to reap. Praise God. So the day unto the day uttereth speech and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech or language where the voice is not heard. What does it say right here? Their line has gone out through all the earth. That's that line upon line, brothers and sisters. It's that precept upon precept. It's that stammering lips and other tongues whereby he speaks to his people. Because in them, in these things that God shows us, and as we draw close to Jesus, and we just fall in love with Jesus, we love him with all our heart, and we just give ourselves to him, and we talk to him, and when we lay upon our bed, we talk to Jesus, Glory. and we just reach out to him, and we're not afraid to get up here and be broken down. Let the Lord break you down. Let the Lord break you down. Well, a broken and a contrite spirit. It, he will not despise. We don't want to. We don't want to be despised of God. Lord. But we want to take the lowest seat, so that Jesus can exalt us in good, due season, so that it can be the anointing of God and nothing else. Praise God, because it's His delight. It is his good pleasure to give unto us the kingdom. Oh, little flock, don't you know he loves you? He loves you with an everlasting love. Praise God. For in them, in these words, these words of life, these words that jump out of the page, in the simplicity of the gospel, don't you know that everything is simple to him that understandeth? If you'll pray for wisdom, then you know that wisdom is the principal thing. And when you get wisdom, you get understanding. God wants to give you understanding that the bowels of your compassion will be moved. Glory. That you can hold out your hands and give to your brothers and sisters. And in this, my brothers and sisters, has he set a tabernacle for the sun. Indeed. Oh, for the sun to rise. He wants to rise and shine upon you with healing in his wings. This holy angel of the Lord, holy God, this glory cloud that my brother was preaching about last night. This is the angel of the Lord. It's the ghost of Jesus. Oh, when he sent back the comforter. Praise God. He sends back his ghost. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. And it is his word because his word, the word is God. That's why when we eat this flesh and drink this blood of Jesus Christ, we become partakers of that sacrifice that he made for us. He begins to transform and translate us into the kingdom of God. If you look unto Jesus, you'll live. He yes. is the author and the finisher of your faith. Praise God. He's the beginning and the end. He was there at the beginning of the race. And he's going to be there right at the end. Praise Alpha God. Praise Amiga. God. Praise God. Which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoices as a strong man to run a race. Oh, praise God for the joy that was set before.